All right, this is a quick lesson on multiplication and division of integers. I'll also be doing the guided practice um, on multiplication on page 236 and the guided practice off of page 246 over division. So I group these two lessons together because, to be honest, the, the rules are the same. And part of the reason the rules are the same is sometimes we do division by doing multiplication, right? In fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. Um, so we can consider these very similar things, even though we talk about them being opposites, they're very similar. So you only have two options here. If you're doing a multiplication or division problem, you're going to be multiplying or dividing two numbers at a time. And if, as long as you're doing it two numbers at a time, if they have the same sign, that would be a positive times a positive, or a negative times a negative, then your answer is always positive. So that means like negative three times negative two, I would still do the math with the absolute value, so three times two is six, and then I'd look at it and say, well, they have the same sign, so your answer is gonna be positive. Even if you had, go back to a math fact, four times seven, you, you did this already, four times seven is 28, they have the same sign, so it's gonna be positive 28, okay? So if it has the same sign, your answer is always positive when you're doing them two at a time. If they have different signs, you can imagine then it's always going to be negative. So that would be saying I had like maybe negative five times four. Well, negative five times four, they only have one negative, so they're different signs. I'm still gonna take five times four and get 20, but since I have different signs, my answer is negative 20. So that might be seven times negative three, once again. 7 times 3 is 21, but since I have one negative, it's going to be negative because they have different signs. I personally like this rule also, is if you have all multiplication or all division or all multiplication and division, that means there's no addition, no subtraction in it, then you can simply count the number of negatives. And if you end up with an even number of negatives, an even number of negatives will make it a positive. And an odd number of negatives, an odd number of negatives will make it negative. So that you might do something like this. If you had negative number to the tenth power, that stands for negative seven times negative seven times negative seven times negative seven. I'm not going to say them all, but there'd be ten negative sevens multiplied together, right? That means I would have an even number of negatives. I'd have ten negatives multiplied together, and if I have an even number of negatives, my answer is going to be positive. The answer to this would be positive. The answer to this one, to the twenty-fifth power, well, 25th power is odd, so it would be negative. So that's kind of the way I think about those rules. All right, so let's do a couple. These are the guided practice on page 236. I'm going to do them. I'll say them both ways. Okay, so one way I would say is these have different signs, so your answer is going to be negative. I could also count the negatives. I have one negative. One is odd, so it's going to be negative. Two. This, remember, stands for negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's negative 3 to the third power, or negative 3 cubed, right? That means I have three negatives multiplied. Three is odd, of course, right? And so it's going to be negative. Well, three times three is nine times three is 27. It's going to be negative because I have three of those. I could have also done it as negative three times negative three. It would have the same sign, so it would be back to a positive nine. But when I took it times that next negative three, nine times negative three becomes negative 27. Number three, you can do it two different ways. I can do it one step at a time, which means two, problem, two numbers at a time. The answer to this, one, negative one times negative three would be positive because they have the same sign, it's gonna be positive. But then when I take that three times negative four, they have different signs, so I'm back to a negative. Negative 12 would be your answer. Or I could have counted them. One, two, three negatives multiplied together, three is odd, it's gonna be negative. And the last, number four, 100 shares, drop three dollars per share, drop would be a negative, right? So that would be written as 100 times negative three. The total here, the total would be negative 300 because I have one negative multiplied or different signs always negative. The rules are the same if you're doing division as well. So here's page 246, negative 16 divided by two. Once again, different signs always negative. So I know it's gonna be eight, it's gonna be negative eight because I have one negative, one is odd. One negative here you can see. So your answer is gonna be negative, one is odd of course. So I get negative six. I could also say, okay, well, different signs always negative. I could say on this one, same signs, your answer is going to be positive, positive six. Or I could count them, I have two, which is even, so that's gonna be positive. 
Number four, 15 divided by y, and y is negative five. So when I substitute it, I have one negative, one is odd. Your answer is gonna be negative, negative three. Or I could say different signs, always negative. This one I have x times y, so that would be eight times negative five, then divided by negative 10. It's all multiplication division, so I could count the negatives. One, two negatives. Two negatives is even, so that makes it positive. Or I could do it one at a time. Eight times negative five, different signs, always negative. And then when I'm dividing, I have the same sign, so I'm back to a positive, positive four. And then here I have x plus y. Now be careful, this is a different rule, right? x plus y, so I have eight plus negative five. Eight plus negative five, I'm in addition rules. They have different signs, so I subtract sign of the larger. The larger one, absolute value is positive. And now I'm doing three divided by negative three. Now when I get to my multiplication rules, even though you notice I had some other negatives, I couldn't use that even number of negatives as a rule because I had some addition in it. Now that I'm all division, I can say, well, one is odd. It's gonna be negative. Or I could say different signs always negative. We have our answer.